Hello again and welcome to the interview with ISO, where we have the honor of interviewing with some of the leaders in the academic life of the University of Toronto. My name is Jinu and I'm the Vice President of the Iranian Student Organization at the University of Toronto Scarborough campus. And today with me we have Professor Sanaz Mazinani from the Department of Arts, Culture and Media. Hello Professor Mazinani, I'm glad to have you here with me. <laughs> Salam and hello to everyone. Thank you for accepting your uh, invitation. And um, I'd appreciate it if you could give us a quick introduction of yourself, please. Yeah, of course. Um, my name is Sonaz Mazinani. I am an artist and a professor at the University of Toronto, Scarborough. I teach in visual arts. So the program is called Studio Art and it's in the ACM department. That's Art, Culture and Media. And then I uh, have my... Uh, graduate uh, teaching that takes place downtown at the um, Daniel School. So that's the MVS program. Thank you so much. Um, could you please tell us a little bit about your background and what you studied at university? Yeah, of course. So I uh, went to university in Toronto. So uh, the start of my university was at the University of Toronto and I actually studied um, a little bit of biology. It was the first year that there was a genetics program so it was completely brand new and I was really excited to get into it. Um, but uh, soon after being there for a while I realized that there was just not enough creative outlet for me. So I opted to switch out of the program and went to the Ontario College of Art and Design University in Toronto. And there, I was blown away at how much more work being an artist was. I couldn't believe it. I was like, like waiting, wishing for my calculus and organic chemistry classes because it was so much easier. But anyways, I stuck to it and I did my undergrad there. And then after that, I went to Stanford to get my master's. And in visual arts, um, at this point, a uh, master's degree is a terminal degree. So if you don't want to stick to school for too long and want to get a chance to teach and excel in your field, um, visual arts and a master's will do it. That is great. That is great to know. Um, so for so many of us, you're a legend in the art world. Could you tell us a little bit about um, your background in the political activism and how you use art to showcase it? Yeah, for sure. Thank you for that. Um, so I actually started to become aware about the importance of art and in particular photography and the visual language of photography when I was in high school. Um, I left Iran when I was 11 years old and I didn't get to go back for another four years. So when I was 15, I went back to Iran for the first time. And that was a really moving and important trip for me because I realized that the way that Iranian people were being imaged in popular culture, in cinema and in films and TV was not at all what it was like to live in Iran and in particular in Tehran. So I understood the power of media and the power of the written word and the power of the image. And so I decided that I wanted to pursue my practice in photography. And I know that was really young, but I kind of knew I had to. Um, and so through that, I decided that I also needed to be more active and speak up. And I started organizing for basically kind of a rock the vote campaign, getting young um, uh, people who were going to vote for the very first time as 18 year olds um, to vote for whoever they believed in. And there on when I started at university, I got really involved in my student union. And at the time, there was a huge tuition strike that was a uh, tuition um, increase that was happening. So we organized a huge strike to go along with it. And we were able to stop tuition increases for three years and then change what the percentage that they wanted to increase it to be more incremental and then the last total. And that was through the Canadian Federation of Students. And so really my main political organization and understanding of the world came 
as a student, as the needs of, uh, of a student. And so slowly as I kind of um, moved uh, away from being a student, I recognized that there's so many other issues, uh, specifically ones that I've been um, directly exposed to, such as racism and how that often leads into much bigger uh, issues of war and conflict. Exactly. You can see that it started from a very young age, those um, movements and everything. Um, so now one of the most interesting projects of yours that we came across was USA Iran, if I'm not mistaken. Um, would you tell us a little bit about um, this project? Yeah. Um... So this was when I uh, moved to the U.S. So I lived in the U.S. for 10 years before coming here, um, coming back to teach at U of T. And so I had finished my master's at Stanford and I was living in San Francisco when I uh, was called to do a public art piece for Washington, D.C. And I knew that I had to deal with kind of lack of understanding of each other's culture. So the lack of understanding of um, Iranians in the US and the lack of understanding of the population, the real like Americans in Iran. And I thought a lot about how um, the fact that the US embassy in Iran has been closed for so many years and the fact that the Iranian embassy has been closed in the US. And I thought about all the cultural exchanges that actually go through um, the cultural attaches of these different uh, embassies. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen pictures of people like Elizabeth Taylor and Andy Warhol in Iran through the, yeah. the invitations of the embassies and, and then vice versa. So I wanted to do a project that responded to the closure of um, these cultural connections. And I picked um, sites in Iran that resemble uh, sites in, in the US. And in particular, I picked Tehran and Washington DC. And everything kind of um, is quite, amazing how there's so much similarity. So there's a park at Lale in Tehran, and there is a park in Washington, D.C. that its architecture is incredibly similar. Um, there is like the, the yellow taxi cabs, the taxi cab culture of the two countries. And so what I did was through my photography and the language of images that exist out there and are proliferated and are uh, kind of signaling the same information over and over again. I wanted to break away from that and to look at languages and visual culture of the similarities of the two different cities. And so I looked online and collected images by <clears throat> people everywhere, not my own pictures, but people photographing in the different cities and brought them together and make these collage works that um, resonate this kind of symbolic uh, weaving and symmetry in, uh, into one another. That is absolutely really interesting. Um, is there any place um, our audience can find any of your works, maybe? Yeah, you can go to my website, which is donazmazinani.com. Uh, um, and uh, <laughs> I mean, honestly, if you just Google it and put image search, you can see the work. But the USA uh, Iran is um, the, a project where if you put that, uh, there should be images of that. And it was a big building. It was an empty derelict building that we cleaned up. It was a former library. And we put um, uh, big murals of these pictures uh, on the walls and it was backlit. So at night people could come by and look at it. And uh, at the top of it, we hoisted the flag that uh, had a quote from Rumi. So um, you should, I would really hope that you can find some of those pictures. Absolutely, we are gonna look for it. Um, 
You've had a quite a journey going to Ontario College um, of Art and Design, OCAD, as you mentioned uh, at the beginning of our interview, and then to Stanford, which, um, which one did you find more exciting or maybe overwhelming? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I found both places exciting for the different times of my life. You know, as a young student in my early 20s, I loved being in art school where there was hardly any rules at the time you know if you guys know the building it kind of stands on these stilts um there was a call for that building being made so the entire um administration was kind of focused on kind of fundraising for that project and finding architects and such so i got to get involved in that and learn but also, uh, the students got to kind of run the show and do a lot of fun things. So, that is, that is quite So that was great. Um, and then later, I, I loved going to Stanford. And I think Stanford is more similar to University of Toronto in that it's old. It has many departments. It has incredible resources, the libraries. And so I really felt privilege to take advantage of everything there um, uh, of, of things that didn't even have to do with my department um, and getting involved in some kind of unexpected opportunities in uh, other departments. That is great. Um, nothing is going to give our current and future students a better insight than the information given to them by a professor who has devoted her life to this path. So do you mind if we ask some general questions about the academic side of the artwork? Yeah, of course. So now could you tell us a little bit about uh, the courses and programs you're involved in at the moment? Yeah. So at the ACM department, I teach studio art. And in particular, my area is photography. I also teach Foundation Studies. Foundation Studies is um, a great uh, starting point. So any student who wants to go into the art program or wants to take any art classes will take this course that's kind of like Art 101. And it's amazing. You get to do all sorts of stuff from performance to um, photography to sculpture to text-based art. And so it allows each student a chance to kind of dabble in the different areas of the visual art world and find out what they like and also meet a lot of students because a lot of the projects are actually collaborative. And we've even figured out a way to do collaborations on Zoom. So Right. Um, the other area, once you pass this first tier, first year of classes, um, is uh, my area is photography. And so we do all sorts of stuff. Um, and each course is developed so that there is different areas that you can excel in and they build on top of each other, allowing someone to, by the end of the courses that they've taken, to have a, to feel they are an expert in that area and feel really confident to be able to make whatever project on whatever subject they want and stand behind it. That is perfect. Um, so what should the students accept from completing this program? Well, uh, I think one of the number one things that you can get out of this program is clarity and vision. It's uh, being able to problem solve is kind of what links those two for me together. So that wherever you are and whatever problem you are looking at, if it's, for example, an engineering problem, or if it's a social or um, dynamic problem, you can approach it from multiple perspectives and from a creative uh, problem solving point of view so that you kind of really have this kind of bag and arsenal of different ways that you can approach any situation and I think um, studying in visual arts really allows for that. That is perfect. Um, what challenges students might face while studying this program though? So studying the program? Yeah. It's it if you want to make good work and if you want to gain um, a good understanding of the depth of it, time. 
time is an issue. That's what I faced when I switched from uh, science back, uh, science area into visual arts. I didn't realize that there's never a right or a wrong answer. You can play at or discover or um, just dabble in something for as long as you want. There's no end. <laughs> in art which is also the beauty of it so exactly um so now is there any challenges that students may face after they graduate from this program yeah i think with any program finding that first stepping stone position um, in your career path in the real world of that career is tough uh, with artists, it's especially tough because if you really do want to be an artist and you don't want to work anywhere else, it's a solitary life, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, you're spending a lot of time uh, on your own, um, uh, managing your own time, managing your own resources and building your own basically um, small business. And so that requires a lot of focus and it requires a lot of stamina and um, it can be difficult. However, if you can manage to create your own business where your number one practice, the thing that you do is the thing that you love and it's all about creativity, you've hit a gold mine, I think. That would be, I guess, the other goal for everyone in this program. Um, do you think that students, uh, by completing this program, will be able to, you know, work in real life or not? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, lot of different avenues for um, someone who's studied art. And again, it depends on which kind of field. So if you go through the path of sculpture, it's one thing. If you go through the path, path of video, you can imagine there's a whole different area. Photography, again, so let's talk about photography. For example, you can become a photojournalist and go all over the world and photograph and get your images published in places like the National Geographic. Or you can decide to do something where you focus more on um, landscape. And so you kind of end up traveling to do landscape photography and then you sell that work or you place that work in museums. Um, there's a lot of artists who end up working with communities and more on the ground. So artists can be amazing liaisons for uh, building um, relationships. You can end up kind of, um, you know, it depends on if you want to do a second degree. So that can lead into so many different degrees from architecture to um, um, you know, just, just there's so many options out there. Um, there's also the world of museums and galleries. If you're interested in curation and programming and and um, again building relationships, um, and then there's this earlier path that I just mentioned to be an artist. You go into the studio, you paint or you make your work, and um, and you communicate your ideas and your feelings through your artistic practice. So there's thousands of options out there. That is absolutely nice. So if you were to recommend a um, students, maybe, um, would you say they should choose their passion or they should just go with whatever is, you know, now high demanding in this um, society, maybe? Well, this is a very good question. Um, okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to be really frank. I think that by the time one is in their 20s, you kind of know somewhere in your mind what kind of life you want to have. And I think that's really important. So one of the things I always tell students is that if you're going to go do a graduate degree, don't only look at the university that you want to go to. Think about the city that it's in. Think about where you want to position yourself for the rest of your life. Because most of the time when you go to grad school somewhere, 
you end up living for the rest of your life in that city. So think about that. Think about what kind of life you want to have. Do you want to live in luxury? Or do you, do you not mind living in a small apartment for the rest of your life and dedicating your, your life to some kind of important research or some kind of important message? And so once you've figured that out, I think you can kind of then start to answer those questions. But I don't ever think that it's a, it's a good idea to follow a trend because what's going to happen when that trend uh, diminishes? Absolutely. You're going to exactly. be left like alone. Where it's so not it's, Yeah. So I think it's like, it would be really smart to try to be ahead of that curve. So you set the trend, you decide what's the next cool thing to do. And just always be true to yourself and who you are and what your background is, what your life has been, what, what your family life is like and how you want to, it doesn't have to be the same thing, but how you want to position yourself into the future. That is great. Um, so what challenges did you yourself uh, face when trying to get into the position that you have? Um, today? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> so as um, any, pretty much any uh, Persian kid, Iranian kid with um, Iranian parents, uh, my parents had a certain expectation that I would be a doctor or a lawyer. And I knew that that was not for me. Um, it was a big challenge to convince them though. Um, thankfully, now they can see that um, uh, I'm happy and that's really what parents want. Um, and that I am stable. I have this great stable position at the University of Toronto, but my career is stable. My, uh, sub, my, my interest is something that I can pursue and I can, um, happily enjoy doing and I think that's the number one thing to, it took me a long time to figure out what I wanted to do that was going to bring me enjoyment for a very very long time not that you can't have a career switch but you know for a while you yeah to pick something close and um the challenges of that is with really navigating that world after finishing university and figuring out uh, where to go next. And so um, one thing that I did was I actually got a job in a gallery um, when I was finished my schooling. And uh, the, the owner of the gallery became a really important mentor to me. Um, he was kind, he was generous, and he was knowledgeable. And so I think finding a mentor, someone who is in that area that you strive to get into, um, who can be a guide for you, um, would be a really smart thing to do. Um, I always think that, you know, one can accomplish what they want through hard work and dedication, but also through a network. And if you can somehow implant yourself around people who inspire you who are doing what you want to do and who you believe that um that you believe in then they can be kind of your your um groundwork for climbing that ladder or, or getting through life uh, and ending up where you want to it's perfect to know um that all this you know um tips from someone like you who as I mentioned at the beginning of the interview is kind of a legend in the artwork here. Um, so thank you very much for this amazing interview. I'm sure this is going to add a lot of value and perspective to all our audience who will watch this. But before we say goodbye, is there any tips, recommendations, any last point that you would like to share with us? Enjoy. Enjoy your time at U of T. Um, it's honestly such a great place to be and you're surrounded like i said by these amazing minds uh, both your peers and your faculty but always remember that 
your peers are going to move on and they're going to accomplish amazing things. And for me, I am so proud to see some of my high school and university friends doing incredible things today. And you guys are going to all be growing up <laughs> even more uh, and you know, establishing your lives uh, simultaneously. So um, keep those conversations going. Thank you so much. And we're all looking forward to any uh, opportunity to work with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you.